This is Jeremy Drebenstead with Demco Products. Today we are going to cover the car side installation of Demco's Air Force One Supplemental Braking System. I like to start by finding a good mounting location for the operating unit, since we will be running everything to the unit like our airline, vacuum line, and wires. The operating unit mounts under the hood in the engine compartment. You can use Velcro, zip ties, or self-tapping screws to mount it. It can be mounted in any orientation. However, we will need to make sure that we avoid moving parts and direct heat. One of my favorite spots to mount the unit is on top of the fuse box. All you need is some good quality Velcro and just make sure you leave enough slack in the wires and airlines in case a fuse needs to be changed in the future. Before you mount the unit, make sure to check the clearance on the hood shutting. Next, we'll move to the inside of the vehicle and get our actuator mounted. But before we get started, let's go over a few things. The most common reason we see cable breaks is because there isn't enough cable between the end of the actuator and the anchor on the firewall. So when the towed vehicle is being driven around normally and the driver pushes on that brake pedal, it's actually bending our cable repeatedly. Eventually it's gonna break where it's been bending. Ideally, we're looking for three and a half to four inches in cable length. By doing this, it allows our cable to actually coil rather than bend. Now, if you don't have enough room between your brake pedal arm and the firewall to get that three and a half to four inches, don't worry. All you have to do is loosen these two Allen head screws and flip around our clamp like so. This will give you a couple more inches to work with when you install your actuator. On some vehicles, the firewall is thin metal, so a single self-tapping screw will not hold. In these cases, we recommend you use the optional reinforcement plate that is included in the kit. To use this, in the desired location for the anchor, hold up the plate and shoot in the two outer self-tapping screws. Next, shoot in the center self-tapper to secure the anchor. You'll notice the center hole is smaller than the two outer holes. This is so when you shoot in the self-tapper, it catches on the plate as well as the firewall when you screw it in. On some vehicles, they may have a wider brake pedal arm, so the standard bolts on the actuator clamp won't fit around the pedal. But don't worry, we got you covered. We supplied longer bolts in the kit, and swapping them out is fairly simple. Start by taking the two Allen head screws from the clamp. Next, remove the nuts off the screws and slide off the outer portion of the clamp. Using a socket wrench, unscrew the smaller bolts out of the clamp assembly. Before you screw in the longer screws, we recommend that you put Loctite on them. Then just simply screw in the longer screws and tighten them down with a flathead screwdriver. Also, add Loctite to the Allen head screws, reinstall them, and you're ready to go. Demco now has a spacer available for this type of pedal. It is part number 6356. It is not required to install the actuator on this type of pedal, but it makes the installation a little easier. To use the spacer, you will need the longer screws installed. Hold the spacer in the desired location against the flat area of the pedal. This can be taped into place to help with the installation. Now that we've gone over the different scenarios you may run into, we're ready to learn how to install the actuator. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is check and see if we have adjustable brake pedals. If you do have adjustable brake pedals, we're gonna to need to go ahead and move those into the full up position before we do our install. Next, what we're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and feed our cable through our anchor. As you can see, we're going to double loop it. Now I'm going to keep it loose right now, and you're going to see why here in just a minute. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to hold it up to the brake arm, kind of center our clamp on it, and we're going to look for a spot on the firewall that's in alignment with the brake pedal and the movement it's going to make. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and grab onto our anchor and slide it forward to the firewall. Then we're going to hold the cable in place on our anchor, bring it back down, and we're going to pull this loop tight. We don't want it to be loose. If we leave it a big loop in it, 
And what it's going to do is the first time it actuates, it's going to try and pull that loop out, and then we're going to put the loose cable. Next, we're going to grab a Allen wrench and tighten down our little set screw here. And we don't want to get Gorilla tight on it. We just want to get it to where it bottoms out and give it about a half a turn. Now that we've tightened that down, we can go ahead and look on the other side of our firewall in the area that we picked for our anchor and make sure we're not going to hit anything with our self-tapping screw like the brake booster. Once we've verified that, we can go ahead and shoot in our self-tapping screw. And then next, what we're going to do is take our actuator, put up on our brake arm, and start all of our nuts. And we can actually move it forward and back to fine tune it. Now what we're looking for is a quarter inch of play in our cable. Once we've found the right amount of slack in our cable, we can go ahead and start tightening down our four nuts on our clamp here. We're going to want to use the crisscross motion to evenly tighten down the clamp. And we actually want it to bend around the brake arm. This is going to act like a lock nut for our nuts here. Once you got that tightened down, all that's left is to attach our air hose to the back of our air fitting right here. Once the actuator is mounted, we will need to run our airline and brown wire through the firewall. This can usually be done by finding an existing grommet and fitting them through it. If you cannot find an existing grommet, you can carefully drill a hole through the firewall. Just make sure to pay attention to what may be on the other side. The last thing we want to do is drill through some wires or the brake booster. Once those are ran through the firewall, we're going to jump back to the outside of the vehicle. Next, pull the airline and brown wire through the firewall and pull all the slack out of the airline. But make sure not to pull the brown wire all the way through the firewall. You will then route them to the operating unit. Make sure to take care to avoid moving parts and direct heat. You can now trim the airline to size and plug it into the air out port on the operating unit. Next, we need to run our airline and breakaway wires from the bumper area on the towed vehicle up to the operating unit. Again, make sure to avoid direct heat and moving parts. Connect the airline into the air in port on the operating unit. Next thing we need to do is make our vacuum connection. Let's take a minute to go over that and some of the different scenarios that we may run into. Locate the brake booster on the towed vehicle. Look for any factory check valves. If there are factory check valves, or if it is an EcoBoost or a turbo model, we will want to make our connections as close to the brake booster on the booster side of the factory check valve. If installing on a 2017 or newer F-150, you will need our vacuum T adapter, part number 6257. Here is a brief overview on how this adapter is installed. Looking at the brake booster, locate the sensor plug directly into the brake booster, usually on the lower portion of the brake booster. Once located, all you have to do is pull the sensor out of the brake booster and in its place push the 90 degree barbed part of the adapter into the brake booster. You may use a small amount of spray silicone to help get it in. Take the sensor and insert it into the rubber end of the adapter and tighten down the clamp. You will then connect the supplied vacuum hose to the barred fitting in the middle of the adapter. You may then route the vacuum hose to the operating unit. For those non-vacuum booster applications like the Hydro Boost or Electric Assist, we are going to cut a one inch vacuum line and insert the barbed plug. On the side of the unit where there is the brass fitting, we are going to insert the rubber plug and screw on the cap provided in the kit. For hybrids, we will just simply leave the ports open. If the vehicle has the standard 3 8 rubber line, you can simply make your cut and install the provided T-fitting. You may then make a cut between the T-fitting and the engine and install the check valve black side facing the engine. You will then connect the provided vacuum line to the T-fitting and run it to the operating unit and trim to size and then connect it. 
On the Air Force One, don't forget to install the check valve at the operating unit, black side facing the unit. If the vehicle has hard vacuum lines, you will need to cut it and make your vacuum line assembly like the example shown here. Also, make sure to use the provided clamps, otherwise you may end up with a vacuum leak. If you have the larger half to 5 eighths of an inch diameter vacuum line, make the assembly using the provided adapters in the kit like the example shown. Remember, you can always get onto our website and look under Vehicle Install Pictures. On there we have different makes and models and examples of how to make that vacuum connection. We can now start wiring up the operating unit, starting with one of the black wires on the unit. Install an eyelet butt connector and find a good ground on the vehicle. Some vehicles have an existing ground where you can just remove a nut and mount it there. If you cannot find an existing ground, you can use a self-tapping screw and screw it into the body of the vehicle. Demco does not recommend making any connections directly to the battery. Next, we'll take the other black wire coming from the unit and using a butt connector connect it to the black wire coming from the breakaway switch. Next, we will take our orange wire coming from the breakaway switch and connect the three-way butt connector to it. The brown wire we ran through the firewall will also get connected to the three-way butt connector. The last thing we will connect to the three-way butt connector is our fuse holder. This will need to be cut and stripped on both ends. One end will connect to the three-way butt connector. Make sure to tape all your connections. On the other end of the fuse connector, install an eyelid butt connector. Again, Demco does not recommend making our connections straight to the battery. Instead, locate the fuse box. Inside, you will find a positive connection where you can make your connection there. Take care not to install the fuse in the fuse holder until the install is complete. Let's move to mounting the air fitting on the front of the vehicle. You have a few options on how to mount this. First is using the standard L bracket that the air fitting comes on. With a couple self-tapping screws, this can be easily mounted on the front bumper. Another option is if you install the Demco base plate, we provide a mounting bracket for the towed wiring. And on that bracket, we provide a couple extra holes to mount the air fitting. To do this, you just unscrew and separate the air fitting from the L bracket. Then choose a hole on the base plate mounting bracket and simply screw the air fitting in and tighten it down with some wrenches. For the breakaway switch, we provide a bolt, washer, and a lock nut to mount it. I recommend using either an existing hole or drilling a hole in the bumper to mount it. When you tighten it down, leave it just barely loose enough so it can be swiveled out when in tow and swiveled in when not in tow, like the example shown in this picture. Let's move on to the last part of our installation, the notification. Demco has two ways to accomplish this. The standard way is a notification light. This is an LED light that is typically mounted on the rear view mirror of the towed vehicle, facing the windshield so it can be seen in the rear view camera on the coach. Sometimes this isn't the ideal spot to mount it, as more vehicles have sensors and tint that may obstruct it. Another option can be on top of the dash or on the A-pillar. Before mounting it, it may be a good idea to check with the customer first. The other option Demco offers is our wireless coach link. This is accomplished by a transmitter getting wired up in place of the LED light. A receiver is plugged into the auxiliary plug in the coach and every time the brakes apply in the towed vehicle, the receiver lights up. I will cover how each of these are installed as well as some troubleshooting. The Air Force One actuator uses a reed switch for its notification. This is a magnetic switch that when the magnet inside the actuator moves away from the switch, it activates and lights up the notification light. It is important when wiring this up that you pay attention to the wiring diagram. As you can see, the wires are not color coded. Also, there is a ground that you have to run as well. Not connecting these correctly 
or forgetting the ground will result in the read switch not performing like it should. First, locate the read switch provided in the kit, as well as the LED notification light. Start by connecting the brown wire we ran through the firewall to the brown wire on the read switch using one of the butt connectors provided in the kit. Next, connect the red wire from the LED light to the black wire on the reed switch using a butt connector. Locate the three-way butt connector provided in the kit and connect the black wire from the LED light, the blue wire from the reed switch, and on the last post of the three-way connector, we will run an extra wire that we will ground to the vehicle. You may now slide the reed switch into the reed switch clamp. To seat properly, it needs to slide in until the flathead screw is in the circle shape of the mount. Then take a flathead screwdriver and tighten it down to secure it. If you are having trouble sliding it in all the way, try loosening the screw and try again. Let's go over how to install the other option Demco has for our notification, the wireless coach link. Make sure to have the wiring diagram in front of you when doing this. If you notice, the wires are not color coded. Also, make sure not to forget the ground to the vehicle. Failure to wire this up correctly or forgetting the ground will cause the notification to not work properly. Start by taking the brown wire that was ran through the firewall and using a butt connector, connect it to the brown wire on the reed switch. Next, take the black wire from the reed switch and using another butt connector, connect it to the red wire on the wireless coach link transmitter. Lastly, using the three-way butt connector, you will connect the blue wire from the reed switch, the white wire from the wireless transmitter, and the last wire will be the wire you use for the ground to the vehicle. To test the wireless coach link, you can plug it into the auxiliary plug in the towed vehicle. A green light will light up indicating that it is paired. Then lightly push on the brake pedal while you pull out on the back of the actuator. You will then see three lights illuminate on the coach link. Now that you have tested and confirmed that the coach link is working, you can go ahead and mount the transmitter up under the dash on the towed vehicle. To do this, you can use Velcro or zip ties. Let's go over some common troubleshooting on the reed switch. If the light is staying on, first check your wiring and make sure you have it wired correctly. Also, make sure that the reed switch is seated secure and correctly in the clamp assembly. A lot of times it just needs to be adjusted. You can fine tune the adjustment of the reed switch by loosening the clamp with a screwdriver and sliding it towards the firewall on the vehicle until it shuts off. Check to make sure it comes on correctly by lightly pushing on the brake pedal while pulling out on the back of the actuator. It should turn on within one eighth of an inch of movement. If you've checked the wiring and made sure the reed switch is secure and tried adjusting it and the light still stays on, try removing the reed switch from the clamp and hold a magnet up to it. This should shut it off. If it doesn't turn off like the light in this video, please give Demco a call.